Recall in the last video, we wrote x as a function of all the other variables to prove the relationship between the money that we spend on good y relative to the total income. In this video, let's use the same logic, but to prove it for the other variable. Let's write y as a function of all the rest, and we're going to prove how much we spent on x relative to the income. So if we keep y on one side, and we take these other variables on the other side by division, so we're dividing both sides by alpha times price of y, we would have x times px times beta divided by alpha times price of y. And let's just write it for the sake of the notation as beta divided by alpha. So just to show this relationship again between the exponents. And then we have the relationship between the prices. Price of x divided by price of y multiplied with x. Multiplied with x. Now what did we do last time? We substituted this into the budget constraint. So let's do that here as well. Price of x times x plus price of y times y equals to the money, to the income that we have to spend. And let's substitute. We have price of x multiplied with x. We keep that as it is. Price of x times x plus price of y times, we substitute for y this entire relationship. So we have beta over alpha multiplied with price of x divided by price of y times x uh, equals to m. Now, let's do some simplifications because we can do that. We have here price of y and price of y cancel out so we're left with price of x times x plus beta times price of x times x divided by alpha equals to m now what do we see here we see again a common factor we can see that we have price of x times x over here and price of x times x over here However, we cannot take it as a common factor yet because we don't have the same denominator. So let's multiply this fraction by alpha and make a common denominator. So let's write over here. Alpha times px times x plus beta times px times x divided by alpha equals 2m. Now, let's take the common, the common factor that we were talking about. px times x over here. px times x over here. So let's go a bit below to make some more space and write it. If we take that as a common factor, px times x multiplied with, in brackets we're left with alpha from the first term plus beta from the second term. All of this divided by alpha equals 2m. Let's do a cross product. Let's do a cross product. So we would have now px times x times alpha plus beta divided by alpha, sorry, we said the cross product, so equals to alpha times m. Now let's divide both sides by alpha plus beta. So let's take basically alpha plus beta on the other side so that we're left only with the money that we spent on x. Price of x times x equals to alpha divided by alpha plus beta multiplied with m. And let's give some interpretation for this now. What do we see here? We see that price of x times x that is the money that we spend, money spent for x. And what is alpha divided by alpha plus beta? That's the share of money, the share of income that we spend on x. So this is our share. And what's the relationship between this and the initial utility function? Well, we go back to the utility function. So it's all the way up over here somewhere uh, here. And we look at it and we can see that this is the relationship. Alpha relative to alpha plus beta, which is equal to 1, is going to be the share that we spent on good x. So for instance, if that was, let's say, 0 0.7, then 70% of income goes on expenses on the good x. And that's it. That's the math that we prove the Cobb-Douglas function. I hope this makes sense, and we are done.